Okay, this question is from Unit 3, the alternative to practical. So, um, during an experiment, a student used the measuring instrument shown in the photograph, which is, of course, it's a vernier caliper, to measure the diameter of a small metal sphere. State the resolution of the measuring instrument shown in the photograph. A reminder that resolution is the smallest increment of a measurement. It's the smallest quantity we can measure with a specific instrument. So for vernier calipers, that resolution is 0.1 millimeters. So the instrument that we're usually measuring uh, length, it's either the ruler, which gives me a resolution of usually one millimeter. Then we have the calipers, like this one here, where we have 0.1 millimeters resolution. And the other one that we usually use in physics is the micrometer, which gives me a resolution of 0.01 millimeters. So these three are the main instruments for measuring length um, that we're gonna come across in physics. Um, then, we need to explain why this device is a suitable device to measure the, diam the diameter of the metal sphere. So, again, um, I've already written the answer here, uh, as it is on the masking. Um, so, the percentage uncertainty is small. Just a reminder of what a percentage uncertainty is. By definition, the percent percentage uncertainty is the resolution of the of the instrument the or the uncertainty over the actual measurement now in this specific case you can see that the measurement is 13.2 uh, millimeters and the resolution is 0 0.1 and that resolution you can see that is much less than uh, the diameter that is being measured uh, in this case. You can also uh, prove the second point by doing a small calculation. So based on the values you have, the uncertainty of the resolution is 0.1 millimeter and the measurement, the one that is shown on the photo is 13.2. And that will be of course times 100 to make it a percentage. And this will give me a value of 0.75%. So you can see that this is a very, very small uh, percentage uncertainty. So that's why the vernier caliper, uh, it's a suitable um, instrument. A ruler, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be a, the best option. It will have given me an uncertainty of 7.5%. Right, micrometer will have been even, even better, but the micrometers, remember, they don't measure um, big kind of lengths, right? So I think in that case, a vernier caliper would be the most appropriate um, instrument. Now, um, the student measured the diameter, the reading obtained was 20.5 plus or minus 0 0.05 millimeters. So calculate the percentage uncertainty in the measurement of this diameter. So as I already mentioned, uncertainty, percentage uncertainty is the uncertainty of the measurement over the actual measurement. So in that case, the percentage uncertainty, it would be 0 0.05 over the actual measurement, which is 20.5. And this is multiplied by 100 to get a percentage. So if you do the calculations, that will give you 0.24%, which is the uncertainty, relatively low quite low. Moving on to the next part, the student took further measurements of the diameter and calculated the mean. So, the student took multiple measurements to find the mean of the diameter. Describe how the student should use this measuring device, the, the vernier caliper, to make the measurements as accurate as possible. So, there's two points given in this question. You need to mention any two of these three points that I have mentioned on the on the answer area um, first one take readings in different orientations or different positions what does this mean is that you can put the vernier caliper across this end right or you can do the same thing by putting the vernier caliper across
across these two ends or these two ends right so that's why it's saying that you should be changing the orientation or the position then check for zero errors as you can see on this image when the when the verdict caliper is kind of closed it should give you a reading of zero otherwise you have a zero error and you have to kind of adjust the final reading based on the zero error you have to either you know subtract or add into your final reading if you have a zero error and and the the last point ensure measurement is at the widest point that means we have to make sure that the measurement is taken on the widest point right if you try to measure take a measurement there of course this will not be uh, the diameter or somewhere anywhere below the the center of the sphere next one d the student measured the diameter of a second metal sphere and recorded the following readings calculate the mean diameter of the second metal sphere now there's five readings over there all of them are around 19 millimeters except this one here which is a bit off so we can consider this one as an anomaly and therefore we shouldn't include it into the calculation for finding the mean right so therefore how do we find the mean the mean diameter we add all the other measurements so that would be 19 plus 19.1 plus 18.9 plus 19.1 divided by the number of measurements so in that case is one two three four out of five because the fifth one we've kind of um, ignored it so this will give you an answer of if you do the calculations it will give you an answer of 19.025 you can see that this one is more precise than the actual measurements which is not possible we cannot have a mean by you more precise and more accurate than the actual uh, measurement of the ability that the instrument is giving us so therefore we need to um, round this to one decimal place therefore that will be 19.0 millimeter will be the mean diameter of the second metal sphere and then moving on to the second part of this calculate the percentage uncertainty in the mean diameter so earlier we have mentioned that uh, to find the percentage uncertainty is actually the uncertainty over the actual measurement now in that case we have um, we have a few measurements not just one like we did before so in this case the, the formula is changing so if I want to find the uncertainty of the mean I need to find sorry this is just the uncertainty of the percentage so the uncertainty of that mean remember earlier we had 20 point uh, what was it 20.5 plus or minus 0 0.05 plus or minus 0 0.05 so that was the uncertainty that was the measurement right so in that case we have a mean we have uh, multiple measurements therefore we need to find the uncertainty that corresponds to that mean so how do we find the uncertainty we find the range of the values and we divide by two it's pretty much half the range so how do i find the range is the largest value which is in that case 19.1 subtracted by the smallest value which is 18.9 divided by two therefore that will be 0 0.2 divided by 2 therefore the uncertainty in that case will be 0 0.1 millimeters yep so we can write that value over there as plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeter so we have the mean and we have the uncertainty of the mean now this question though is asking us to find the percentage uncertainty not just the value of the uncertainty the absolute uncertainty you will have to find the the percentage uncertainty so we just follow the same um, the same formula now it will be the uncertainty which is 0 0.1 over the value which is 19.0 times 100 
So this will give me 0.526% and I'm just rounding down to two decimals which will be 0.53%. Moving on, the student measured the mass of the first metal sphere. So we're going back to the first one now. All right, in the last couple of questions, we were discussing about the second uh, metal sphere. Now we're going back to the first one. Um, it's measuring the mass using a top pan balance. So this is what a top pan balance is. I think this is what uh, most schools use to measure the, the mass. Uh, we're given this value for the mass and we have to find the density. So we know that density is the mass over volume. So the mass is already given. Therefore, we need to find the volume of the sphere to be able to get the density. So, what is the, what is the formula to find the volume of a sphere? So, that would be 4 over 3 times pi times radius cube. From this question, we were given the diameter. Remember the diameter, it was 20.5 plus and minus 0.05. So we can kind of change that formula slightly. So instead of radius, we're using diameter over two. We know that. We know that the radius of a, of a circle is diameter over two. And that's cube. And if we just do the calculations, diameter was 20. 0.5 divided by 2, but because that was in millimeters, I need to multiply this by times 10 in the power of minus 3 to convert this into meters. Now, if you do, and this will be cubed, yeah. So if you do the calculations, the volume of the sphere will be 4.51 times 10 in the power of minus 6 meters. And that will be meters cube. All right. So we have we have the mass. We found the volume. So next step is to find the the density. So the density will be mass over volume. Mass is given in grams. So I have to convert this into kilograms. How do I do that? Again by multiplying by 10 to the power of minus 3 or dividing by, by 1,000. And we have to divide that with the volume that we have just calculated. So, again, if you do the calculations, you'll get an answer of 7.89 times 10 in the power of 3. And what the units are, it's kilograms, because we have converted to kilograms, over meters cube. So, 7.89 times 10 to the power of 3 kilograms over meters cube. And the last part, we have to compare the densities of, uh, of these two spheres and see whether they are made of the same metal. So we're given the second metal sphere to be 7.75. So the density of the second the second one is 7.75 times 10 in the power of 3. And it has the uncertainty of 2%. So this is pretty much like plus or minus 2%. So what do we need to do? We need to find that 2% of the value. So we're given the percentage uncertainty and we need to find the, the absolute, the actual value uh, of that uncertainty. Right. So simply we have to do we have to find the 2% of that value over here. Yeah, so the 2%, it will give me an answer of that if you do the calculations, right? So that means the density of the sphere, of the second sphere, is 7.75 times 10 to the power of 3, plus or minus 0 0.155 times 10 to the power of 3. So, therefore, what is the possible 
what is the range of the possible values for density? So we have to see the upper range if we add this uncertainty. So here I'm adding 7.75 plus 0 0.155. So this will give me 7.905. So I'll do this in two decimals just to match with my initial value. And I will also calculate the lower boundary. So if I subtract that, so 7.75 minus 0.155. So this will give me an answer of 7.595 and if I round it that will be 7.60. Okay, now, are these two spheres made from the same material? If they are, if they are made from the same material, th that means their densities has to be the same. Now, the, the first metal sphere, it has a density, as we have calculated on the previous part, of 7.89 times 10 to the power of 3. So, does this 7.89 falls within the range of these two values? Yes, it does. Yeah. So, the first metal sphere has a density that falls within the range of the densities of the second sphere. Therefore, we can say that, yes, they are made... Um, they're made from the same material. Yes, because the densities are the same.